Hello and welcome back. And finally, I've got my hands on the Synology DS1019. Okay, so for those that have been following this YouTube, the other two YouTube, NAS Compare, Span, and the rest of it, we've known about this device for almost six months. It's a new five bay Synology NAS. This device utilizes almost exactly the same spec as the 918 with a few tweaks, but this device arrives with an extra hard drive bay and eight gig of DDR3L memory by default. So there's two questions we're really going to talk about during the course of this video. One, is it worth your data and your money? And two, how does this compare against the 918? Now we've got a full comparison between this and the 918 with myself and any of the web guy on the other YouTube channel. But for today, what I'm going to do is unbox this bad boy and give you a closer look at the hardware and just let you know what exactly you're getting for your money. But to address that first question, is this worth your data? Yes. Right now, this is the, meant to replace uh, in the food chain of Synology the 1517 Plus 2 gig model. They've removed that from the, food, the family tree and inserted this into it. And this device should sit neatly between the 918 and the 1618. So it goes 918, 1019, 1618, 1819 Plus, etc. So is it bad that they're using the same hardware inside? That same hardware being an Intel J series, the J3455, very popular quad-core Celeron chip that's being utilized a great deal in NAS at the moment, as well as that memory, eight gig. It is a great setup. We've been seeing this CPU featured more and more in NAS because it's so damn versatile. Not only is it power efficient, it's powerful. It can be utilized for virtual machines with Synology's Virtual Machine Manager. It can be utilized in Plex, uh, turning the NAS into a Plex media server that features hardware transcoding in the application. There's so many more, to, more things than that with Synology's DSM software, with the increases in moments, calendar, chat, active backup suite, just so many uh, Synology Mail, Synology Surveillance Station 8.2. There are so many applications that this can do that that extra memory will facilitate. And of course, that extra bay means you can be a little bit more out there with your RAID configurations. With DSM 7.0, hopefully in beta very, very soon, when that happens, we might be able to get our hands on some of that active um, smart raiding, that thing that we saw at the Synology Live event last year, whereby you can have a normal raid configuration, but you can also select a bay to be like a hot drive in the background. And then what happens is the device will, if it sees one of the drives that it's got is showing symptoms of failure, but hasn't actually failed, it will start automatically cloning that drive onto that hot drive in the background. So in the event of a raid problem, and it collapses, this other drive is instantly ready with no need for RAID rebuilding because this drive is a duplicate. Things like that are something I'm very, very interested in. Plus, with Synology Moments now supporting um, live photos from our iOS device, as well as innovations in Synology Drive, this is the time to not only invest in a NAS like this, but a NAS with this kind of hardware. I do believe this is worth your data and your money. Of course, if you are on a tighter budget, the 918 is still a fantastic NAS. But if you can spare the extra hundred or so quid, definitely consider it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to flick over to the other camera, and we're going to start unboxing this bad boy to give you some idea how the hardware looks real close up. Okay, so for those that don't already know, the external packaging to this is remarkably similar to that of the 918. In fact, the boxes side by side are near enough identical in size, and the only reason there's any difference is the internals have been expanded accordingly. On the front here, we have a sticker that gives us lots of information about the device itself, everything ranging from 4K to the number of cores, to the AES encryption and more. I'm pleased to say this does uh, support AES-NI encryption. So that's uh, the new instruction, AES being advanced encryption standard new instruction. And it is a much faster algorithm to ensure that you can have encrypted read and write of all of your data, but still maintain those nice high speeds. Um, if we open up the retail box, we can take a good look inside. Full disclosure, I have already opened this device for another video, so I'm sorry if some of the seals are already broken on some bits. But inside, if we remove it off camera, we have as follows. We have a UK mains lead. That, lots of cardboard here. We have 
an external PSU power brick. And again, this is very similar to the other one. It's a four pin power brick there. So you can't have an internal PSU on such a small device. <clears throat> a lot of people see that as an advantage. I'm gonna let you guys decide on that. Uh, just because if you do have a PSU failure, my God, it's easier to deal with an external power brick. <clears throat> Next, we have a LAN cable, of course, because you're gonna need network connectivity. And this device does arrive with two LAN ports on the rear to support link aggregation. It's also a quick start installation guide that gives you real-time information about this device and first-time setup. There's screws for installing two and a half inch SSDs and hard drives, but don't worry if you're not going to be utilizing those. This device supports the very latest um, hard drives, 14 and 16 terabyte hard drives indeed. Pleased to say this device also supports um, 14 TB hard drives from the likes of Seagate. You'll have to forgive me there, I had to look off camera to try and find the drive. But again, if you are gonna be utilizing this to drive with Seagate drives, do bear remember that, that means you can take advantage of the Iron Wolf Health um, software that arrives on a number of these discs. Do double check that the drive you're purchasing has got it on board. But that means that you can get the, use the health management tool to learn more about your storage and do better tests than the average smart test to know if things are running well within your Synology. This combined with that software mentioned earlier on that's going to be in the new DSM 7.0 beta when it arrives that lets you have a RAID working as a safety net in the background and with much better tools and identification of hardware, hard drive problems that and the Seagate health um, management and that recovery tool that a number of you have talked about before with the Seagate recovery service if your drive fails there's a lot of good reasons to go for some of these drives, and particularly NAS-based hard drives. Next, we've got keys for the hard drive trays, because of course this device has lockable trays, and that just leaves the unit itself. The unit arrives in a standard Synology plastic bag, and once you remove that bag, you've got the unit itself. And again, it's very similar to that of the 918, it's just a little bit wider, and once again, I do recommend you check out mine and Eddie's comparison on the other YouTube channel. If we take a good close look at this, we can see those bays there. And remember, each one of these bays can be locked with those keys that were provided earlier. It's a front-mounted USB port, which you can be utilized for localized backup, and you can use the USB copy software that arrives with DSM to um, immediately initiate a backup um, task once you connect to USB storage drive, be it the entire NAS onto an external drive or the external drive onto the NAS. There's a power button and LEDs uh, denoting for each individual drive as well as system status and network connectivity. The drive trays themselves are screwless in design as mentioned earlier on. So if you take a good look, you've got the, I know they're plastic, but in a chassis like this, you're not gonna have to worry too much about that kind of thing. And of course, metal trays do produce more noise. In order to install um, hard drives, let's grab that Seagate drive again. And once again, I do recommend that you use NAS-based drives for NAS use. This drive is only for guidance. I recommend the Seagate Iron Wolf drive for this. You take the drive, you pop it inside the case like so. Then you take the clips and the clips go on very easily indeed. And there you go. That drive is now ready to go inside our NAS. We can slide that straight in. And voila. Again, this device supports SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID. And Synology Hybrid RAID means that this device, it doesn't matter what drive you put inside, mixed or not, it will create one specialized RAID volume with all of those drives and always have one driver failure. You're not really gonna mix drives from the day, uh, day one, but later on, years from now, you might want to introduce new, bigger drives and SHR will let you mix those drives accordingly. It should also be mentioned that while we're talking about years, this device arrives with three years of manufacturer's warranty. Now, if we look at the base of this device, we've got two rather interesting slots. These two slots here are SSD caching slots. And what happens here is if you add NVMe, that's fast SATA-based SSDs, not SATA, what am I saying? PCIe based SSDs such as the Samsung 970 series or the WD Black series of SSDs, you can use this to improve read and write speeds on those hard drives. Do bear in mind, of course, 
If you only put one drive in, you will only have one kind of cache. There is read cache and read and write cache. So do bear that in mind. But I do recommend utilizing that if you are going to be using high volume data transactions to and from this device. On the sides of the device, we've got the Synology logo that's been utilized as ventilation. A nice touch that I've always liked from Synology. And of course, more ventilation there on the bottom just with those NVMEs. Once again, I do recommend you check out my video about utilizing the M2D18 cache card to give you some indication about what can be achieved by utilizing SSD cache on a Synology. On the rear, we have two fans that can either be manually adjusted or automatically um, adjusted their uh, adjustments of their read and write speeds as the device requires more or less cooling. But of course, you might want to do it manually to lower any noise from those fans, but it's not a very noisy box at all. On the bottom here, we've got those two LAN ports. Now, these two LAN ports can be used individually or added together via link aggregation to effectively give you two GBE connectivity, which if you've got a supported switch, you will see the benefits. Next, we've got an eSATA port based here on the bottom for adding the DX517 expansion to give you five more bays of storage, hence the 10 in the unit's title. And finally, another USB port there that can be used for storage or supported and compatible devices. Again, this isn't the cheapest five bay. Let's be completely upfront about that. You are spending more than hundred pounds more than you would have on a 918. So coming back to the original question, how does it compare with the 918? Well, if you were to buy a 918 and upgrade it to eight gig of memory, that still would have cost you around 40 pounds. The extra bay of storage on the Synology would probably set you back again on most devices on a four to five to eight to 12 bay comparison, hard drive bays generally cost between 50 and 60 pounds per bay across most NAS brands. So for the most part, I would say that the justification between the price difference is largely justified if you're going to use that extra bay. If you don't think you're going to use it, save yourself a bit of money and buy the arm money. If you don't think you're going to multitask to the degree where 8 gig of memory is going to service you, go for the smaller unit. If you're going to utilize this, for example, as a Plex Media server, you're not going to see the benefits of that 8 gig of memory, but you might well see the benefits of that extra bay. If you're going to use a RAID 6, you're probably not going to use that memory, but you're more than likely going to need that extra bay. So what it comes down to is if it's more than five people using this NAS, the memory more than justifies it. But in every other regard, this and the 918 are a very similar NAS. And whichever one you go for, you have got yourself a fantastic NAS storage solution. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. We don't use Patreon. We don't use PayPal. This, this platform is supported by your um, just joining us here on the channel and contributing for yourselves with your comments and your likes and your subscribes. And do go to the comment section below and the description where there is the link to the NAS Compare free advice section. If you've got any data storage requirement, message me directly there and I'll do my best to help you. I'm not going to say it's the fastest, but I will answer all of your questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.